Oh me. Oh my. We got some titles to t talk about. I don't know how to rhyme. Oh God. So this is really exciting. Oh my gosh. We have a new distributor on the block and there are two titles uh, already ready to go. So Cauldron Films is a whole new uh, distributor. It's, uh, I guess, founded by Jesse Nelson from Diabolic DVD, or he is one of the main partners. I think it's, I think it's his company. I could be wrong. Uh, I've done the, the bare amount of research, but uh, uh, from my understanding, it is Diabolic DVD's very own Jesse Nelson, who is, of course, a great guy just for giving us so much as fans of niche cinema. And uh, you know what? You might as well pay the guy back by buying some titles from his new company, because, spoiler alert, they're pretty fucking good. So one, this is a dumb thing, but I, I hate that it's, um, that American Rickshaw is number one and Abracadabra is number two because uh, I put these, uh, my shelves are organized uh, alphabetically. So let's let's just dig into these. Um, Cauldron Films, by the way, um, I, I'm recording this well ahead of time. So I don't know if at this point they've announced their other two titles, but they do have, of course, two European titles, 170s, 180s, uh, also in the making. I don't know where they are with that, but I'm very, based on this, I'm very excited to see what they come up with. So I love, first off, just uh, my general uh, impressions right off the bat. I love, first of all, that we have a new title in the lineup. Uh, a lot of these companies are really all about old titles. Uh, and, and Abracadabra is, of course, a um, a take on the Jalo, and it tries very hard to be a 70s Jalo product. Um, so in that sense, it's only new by virtue of the fact that it was made in 2018. But that's pretty cool. I, I like New Blood, um, and the Anetti brothers seem like pretty cool dudes, so good for them being part of the like flagship product of a new label. That's pretty tight. And with American Rickshaw, I love that we're getting some obscure Sergio Martino joints. I love Sergio Martino, and anytime I can get my hands on like a new transfer of a Sergio Martino joint, I'm all about that shit. Uh, he put out some great work throughout his career, and uh, it's looking pretty good too. You know, he's, he's a little of a fox. And now let's let's talk about the packaging. Um, if you're a patron of mine, which uh, shout out to my patrons because uh, they've already seen the unboxing. When I first got this, I made an unboxing just for them and looked at the packaging. So a few things to note. I really appreciate that this is a side loader. Um, I love side loading slip cases. Both very similar um, in how they're put together. Uh, raised lettering for the titles uh, and a few other raised bits and glossy bits on the covers. And then on the back, Loop -a -doop -a -doop. Uh, very, very, very similar. And by very similar, I mean basically the exact same. Good job, guys. You have branding. And uh, I love a little cauldron guy. I don't know if he has a name, but I love a little cauldron guy. And um, yeah, I, <laughs> I love this packaging. Inside, uh, with American Rickshaw, um, you open it up. Pretty simple stuff there. We've got double-sided slipcover. These guys know what I like. They know what I like. And then inside you have an essay by David Zuzello. It's not a, it's not a long essay, it's just a little brief thing, but still, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So generally, uh, as far as American Rickshaw goes, great packaging. And then for Abracadabra, open her on up. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. And you get two options. Um, the In this case, it's not a huge difference as far as the uh, front artwork goes, but still it's a it's a good insert. I uh, I like it and then inside this is pretty cool So you get the CD soundtrack um, Which the soundtrack to this is good. I wouldn't call it great. It's 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 no more gone You know what I'm saying, but uh, it's you know, it's a good soundtrack. I could I'll definitely Drive around whenever I leave this fucking house and listen to it. I guess <laughs> But inside you also get these, uh, well, on one side there's the listing for the soundtrack, but then on the other side you get basically um, lobby cards, kind of cheap, flimsy lobby cards. Awesome. Um, you know, I'm not going to do any. Actually, you know what? I might do something with those. I, I do have this project I'm, I've been thinking of doing that could certainly utilize those. So, um, good stuff. Uh, Blu-ray only, no DVD, which is fine by me. I never use the DVD anyway. So, good shit. In American Rickshaw, Olympic gold medalist Mitch Gaylord plays Scott, and he's a rickshaw puller. 
After he's seduced by a stripper into being part of a peeping Tom routine for the delinquent son of a famous TV preacher played by Donald Pleasance, he winds up pulled into a pretty baffling murder conspiracy. I'm just, it's a, this is a weird film. Don't you say that! Don't ever say it again! Welcome to Dumb Beefcake Mystery Hour, directed by Martin Dolman, aka Sergio Martino. Oh gosh, I, uh, <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, as, as Cat Ellinger kind of points, I think it's Cat Ellinger, it might have been Sam and Deegan, I think it's Cat Ellinger in the uh, commentary, points out, a lot of people consider the Jalo as Sergio Martino's main claim to fame, uh, maybe Hands of Steel. Overall, most people, at least when they're talking about like the good of Sergio Martino's career, they talk about the Jalo films. And the thing about Sergio Martino, um, and he's not my favorite filmmaker, um, you know, he's not Fulci, uh, he's not even Argento for me, but he is a really great uh, sort of bastion of the Italian cinema of the 70s and 80s. And honestly, like, fucking Journeyman. He made some weird shit, off, almost always entertaining. He made really beautiful films. He made really not beautiful films, like this one. Um, but he made very, let's say, good films. He made resolutely good films. Even when the films were sort of technically, mm, not so much, he still made really entertaining work. He's the kind of director that you just, uh, as soon as you see his name on a product, your initial shot, your your initial thought should be, I've got to watch that thing because that thing is going to rock my world. And American Rickshaw is sort of like that. It is not my favorite Sergio Martino movie by a long shot. Uh, for one thing, unlike his Jalo films, it's legitimately not that great of a film. Um, and what I mean by that is it's real dumb, has a lot of issues. There's a lot of dialogue that does not make sense. A lot of a lot of weird non sequiturs, and honestly, a second act that is sort of boring. Uh, first act and third act, bonkers, love it. Uh, second act, it's basically this chase thriller thing that it turns into, and it it doesn't quite work. Nor does it seem like Martino really wants to be doing it. He seems far more interested in this weird Chinese mysticism angle that does not make a lick of sense and is barely explored, but is still a major part of the film. There's a lot of wackiness like that, and like there's. It, it, when I say it doesn't make any sense, this is a film that starts off with Mitch Gaylord picking up, I think, a Chinese woman, putting her in his rickshaw, pulling her along, and we watch in stunned silence as I'm pretty sure she's just followed around by a rain cloud. <laughs> if you look at like the blue skies there, and then just rain pouring down on her, uh, this chick's unlucky, dude. You gotta, you gotta, you need to stay away. Find another fair, because this is a bad idea. There's also the fact that uh, like half the movie, Mitch Gaylord, uh, which by the way, change your name for, if you want to be an 80s action star, maybe Mitch Gaylord, uh, toss that name, try a new one. I realize you were an Olympic gold medalist, but goddamn, in the 80s, not going to work. And so if you look at the poster, the poster presents this, what feels like a, a horror movie. Um, that's what it looks like. And there are horrific elements. There are some really gnarly, there's some gnarly shit that happens, but it's not a horror movie. It is barely a thriller. Um, it is a supernatural action film, I guess. It, it's it's hard to really give it a genre. It's very much a melting pot in that way. Uh, it has that very Italians working in America thing going on. I mean, if you look at, say, probably the most famous example is uh, Claudio Fragasso's Troll 2, uh, where you're just like, what the fuck is this movie supposed to be? And, it, and this has kind of that same vibe. Uh, Troll 2 is probably more entertaining throughout. I mean, that's a film you could just watch again and again and never be bored. That's why it's such a classic in the kind of bad movie circle. That's why you have best worst movie out there as this like really, you know, really successful documentary because it's just that good. This isn't quite that sort of like bad movie mecca if that's what you're looking for, but it is entertaining and bonkers enough to give you kind of kind of give you your fix. The tragic downfall, though, of American Rickshaw is that it just doesn't provide much in the way of surprises outside of Martino's oddball choices early on and in the latter chunk. But it does come back. It does have a second wave to it or a second, second breath? Is that? I don't know. God, I'm so bad at idioms. And the last 20 minutes, like, really is, it has to be seen to be believed. I think that by itself, the last 20 minutes make up for all the problems in the second act uh, to the point where I, I, I kind of, I'm rethinking 
my letterbox. Like, I'm going to go back and change my letterbox rating right after this because I just realized I, I think I actually like this movie more the more I think about it. It's one of those films. Uh, it is a bit of a party movie. It is one of those films that I think will work better with a group. As a solo experience, I think it's a bit of a mixed bag, bordering on the positive side of things, but definitely a mixed bag. I found it in the gutter. I'm sure you're familiar with AIDS. Extras, 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 extras. Let's talk about extras. First off, we get interviews with director Sergio Martino and production designer Massimo Antonello Galling. Is that how you say his name? I, sh I really need to look this shit up, man. This one's 18 minutes and it explains one of the more oddball decisions in the final moments of the film, and we get to see what became of the weird boar statue. Otherwise, it's not a whole lot of info on the film itself since the two spend most of the time speaking in generalities. There's also some small typos in the interview subtitles. It's not really a big deal, but it is a little... I noticed it, that's really, I noticed some typos, but it, it, not a big deal. The Projection Booth podcast basically just has an episode of their show as an extra. It's um, an hour long, Cat Ellinger's on there to talk about the movie. And that's, you know, it's good. I would, I would be more than happy to see more of this kind of thing on Blu-ray releases. I recognize that podcasts are free to <laughs> listen to for the most part. I, I'm pretty sure this one's free to listen to somewhere but it's still cool and it's nice to just have it there uh, and it doesn't take up much space on the Blu-ray, so well, why not? Uh, but you might be less interested to listen to this podcast because Cat Ellinger is elsewhere on the disc. Uh, as I mentioned, there's also a commentary with Cat Ellinger and Sam Deegan and it's really good, like really good. Early on, Cat Ellinger let slip that one of the reasons she wrote her literal book on, on Martino is because of this movie. It's the film that kind of inspired her to write her book. Uh, all the colors of Sergio Martino, and you know that's a that's a good sign. And shock of shocks, the rest of the commentary is very passionate, very knowledgeable about the source material. And honestly, between that and just me talking about the movie right now, it has amped up how much I enjoy this film. I still think there's serious problems. Do not take this as a it's a perfect movie or it's like the next camp classic. It's not, but it is a worthwhile addition to your collection. I think. Um, and with saying that, the, uh, what else we get is we get an image gallery and we get uh, Miami then and now, uh, which is basically it's, it's a bunch of Miami footage um, that someone that looks like someone took on vacation juxtaposed with images from the film. It's not very good. It's like two minutes long and it, ju it feels it literally feels like someone took their vacation footage from Miami with like one or two very specific samples of footage. And at the last minute it was like, oh, I could make this an extra on this Blu-ray. And they just like shoved some footage haphazardly uh, together to make it. And um, I get what they were going for, but I just didn't particularly give a shit. <laughs> but that being said, that's a minor quibble because the rest of this Blu-ray is fucking tight. Uh, the video quality is great as you've seen from the footage you've watched in, in this video. It is a very good looking release. Um, like a lot of these, this period of films, it's very flat looking, um, but the clarity is there. It's retained its grain structure. I didn't see any coding issues uh, when I watched it and that's all good. Like cool, awesome, dope, dope, dope. Check it out. So next up, Abracadabra. Abracadabra is uh, also a mixed bag of a different variety. This one I was not too big on when I first started watching it. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. But then by the end, it really won me over. Uh, it's also like uh, an hour, seven minutes, I think. So it's not a big time sink at all. Basically, it follows this guy who is a magician, and years before, when he was a child, his father died because of a, uh, a gun prop gone wrong. Basically, someone put a real bullet in a gun and, instead of a blank and shot him, and he died, and this has traumatized our hero uh, who's come to town to start his new show, and it does not go well and soon he finds himself uh, potentially framed for murder. And of course it's magic-based murder, uh, as you do, and he goes about this journey to figure out who the real killer is and what's going on, and yeah, that's the movie. So I wanna, okay, first off, don't use drone shots if you're trying to make a movie that's supposed to be made in the 70s. Okay. God. So, all right. My one, bi the thing that actually took me out of this movie right off the get-go, and the thing that really hurt me watching it for the first, like, 20 minutes 
is there are times where it becomes aggressively obvious that this was not shot on film. And that's fine. I, I do not care that it wasn't shot on film. I am perfectly fine with movies imitating the film look. 100% do not care. I would prefer that it was shot on film, sure, but this is also a very niche product that does not have much of any audience, so I am 100% okay with the fact that it is shot digitally. That being said, if you're gonna do that, you need to take certain precautions. One, don't use drones. Simple as that. You know, especially because, I mean, this film is made to look and feel like a film shot in the 1970s in Italy, and they go to great pains to do that in the color grade, but when you start, like, in the first, I don't know, three minutes maybe, there is this uh, big sh wide shot from a drone over uh, like city. And you can tell that it is not doing well in the grade. This, this film has a very heavy color grade. There's a lot going on in the edit. And that footage is not holding up underneath that edit. And there's a few other times throughout the film where that happens where it just, it doesn't work quite quite right because like there's this, uh, there's like there's this blue lighting in some of the theatrical scenes that does not look right. It looks too digital. And there's other little things throughout the film that give away the digital nature. Not a lot though, I'll say that, not a lot. It's not a big deal, but it did fuck with me for a bit because I am a bit of a stickler for this sort of thing. It's something that my eye picks up on real fast and it, it frustrated me. But once I got into the story and once I let myself kind of get past everything and just let this style that the Onetti brothers um, brought kind of wash over me, I had a good time and it actually got better and better as it went until the final twist, which kind of morphs into like two or three more twists. The final, like it, I had a big old smile on my face. That's, that's the kind of twist we're talking about. It is very silly. It is rooted in cliche, but I did not hate it. And in fact, I quite liked it. You know, it's, this is not a perfect film. It's probably, um, three and a half out of five if I'm being, and that's like my love of Jalo kind of shining through. I'm a bit of a, of a simp for that uh, uh, faux Jalo thing. It is a good film. Uh, I do not think it is great, but I do think it is very good. Assuming that you are not a total purist and assuming that you can kind of just fanboy over stuff for, a, for about an hour. <laughs> I will also say, really, like this is a very personable film. It very much, I mentioned Sergio, it's actually, it's weird that Sergio Martino was their other movie because this feels like a Sergio Martino uh, giallo more than anything else. It doesn't feel like a Dario flick. It doesn't feel like a Fulci flick. It doesn't feel like a Bava. It feels like a Martino and that kind of um, style. Very much, uh, if I had to compare it to one movie, maybe um, Your Vice is a Lock Driven Only I Have the Key. That's probably the best, direct parallel. I could be forgetting one, but that's, to me, that's the one that really, um, it reminded me the most of. It's a very, it's, you know, it's this one guy, he's the main focus of the story. We really don't get a whole lot of other storylines unless they're directly related to him. Unsurprisingly, because of course this is an hour long movie, what do you expect? But there is this issue that the film doesn't really seem like it wants to do more with the subject matter. And I think that's the other, that's the glaring flaw. That's what really stops this from being a four out of five is that it, it seems like it's more interested in aping the Jalo style than it is in creating a film that stands on its own. And I think that it is possible to make a film that has all those hallmarks of the Jalo while also making a film that is by itself a great piece of work. And I don't think this one does that. I think a lot of my enjoyment came from the fact that it is this big facsimile of tropes. And in a, in a way, it, it, it all kind of reminds me of The Love Witch. Uh, where it, it almost works, but then there's like these little stumbling blocks. And I think this works maybe a little bit better than The Love Witch. I've only watched The Love Witch once, but that one, I, I felt myself taken out a lot more, I think, than this one, uh, where, I, you know, here I, I just had to like get used to it and then I was in it. So based on how you enjoyed The Love Witch, that might help your, you know, uh, where I'm coming at, or where I'm coming from with this film. Uh, and for those interested, the kills are good. They're not amazing, but they are good. I wish the blood was slightly thicker. It has that kind of watery 
thing going on that's more of a modern blood type, uh, whereas back then it was more like the paint blood, and I would have liked that more painterly blood. But that's a small gripe, I guess, because uh, I love I love blood. So yeah, in the end, this does feel more like a Jello fan film than an actual like by itself movie. But it is a very lovingly made, professionally done fan film. So you know, pros and cons. Uh, if you are okay with a Jalo fan film, then this might be the movie for you. I don't know that we'll get much better. You know, it's it's no Barbarian Sound Studio, but it's it's pretty fucking good. Uh, as far as extras go, we do get an 11 minute series of raw shots from the film. I thought that was pretty dope. That's I I like that a lot just to be able to see what they started with. Once I actually watched that, the grade was so much more impressive. Um, like, it it didn't blow my mind, because I know what you can do with a good raw image, but like considering the raw versus what we actually get in the finished film, it's really cool. So for a, from a, for a technical side of things, this was really nifty, and I feel like a lot of movies don't really want to show this sort of thing, so I was really appreciative that it was part of the of the release. Beyond that, we do get a trailer. That's everything. Uh, this is not an, act, an extras packed release. There is a English track that I kind of listened to a little bit of, and it's okay. The Italian track is definitely better. I, I enjoyed the Italian track quite a bit. So yeah, good release. Um, I would, I would, uh, cons I would look at some reviews and kind of consider this one. I don't know that it's what my viewers are looking for, but I am the guy that did. Whose, whose entire filmography is just loose, like, fan versions of other uh, famous movies, basically. So I can't, I can't give it any shit for that. Uh, it's a really lovingly made film that may or may not be up your boat. Uh, and American Rickshaw is really fun, really stupid. Maybe not as good of a movie as Abracadabra is, but definitely more fun. Um, so I, I would say uh, big, big recommend, mild recommend. Yeah, uh, these these are these are good releases. This is a great way to start a thing. Uh, my only gripe is uh, you know this is pretty solid packaging, but my abracadabra release came with a bit of a dent in the corner here, and uh, I uh, don't like that. I don't like dents. Not doesn't like ruin it for me by any means. I don't have like a big chip on my shoulder whenever I get slightly damaged slip covers. But one of my patrons mentioned that his slip cover was also damaged, so that concerns me um, if there's you know the two people that I know who have gotten this release so far got damaged slip covers that could be a QC issue but uh, also this is a new company and you know while they should know their shipping shit and basically everything else based on diabolic DVDs history I'll cut them some slack I get it it's hard other than that one small gripe great start I can't wait to see what cauldron films comes out with next uh, I hope they're around for a long time, and I look forward to collecting more of their releases. Great job. And yeah, with that being said, thank you so much for watching this review of the first two Cauldron Films releases. Uh, I look forward to uh, talking at your, your, your face holes in the future. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, all that jazz. Of course, my Patreon. Uh, give me some money if you want to, or if you don't want to, don't. Eh, whatever, man. Uh, we have a lot of cool bribes for <laughs> people who give money, and... Uh, I, uh, I love the community that we're slowly creating. Uh, the Discord is one of my favorite things. I barely use Twitter anymore because of it, which is great, because that shit is, is not good for my, uh, my, <laughs> my heart. So yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching, and uh, go watch a movie. <laughs>